So what I want to do first is I want to run through the songs. Let's play through it, refresh it a little bit, and then we're going to talk some numbers today too. So let's go ahead and start from the very beginning. You got the hand clap ready? Or do you have the hand, do you know to have the hand clap triggered for that part? Okay, I just want to make sure we didn't have you earlier. Ready? Everybody ready? So one, two, one, two, three, four. Just a little bit there, Brooklyn. So what I, want, what I want to go over really quick, and this honestly is one of your biggest segs into next year, okay? Um, especially in your middle school career, we've talked about, we've looked at in the beginning, we color code the different numbers, right, or for the strings, so that you know where to go to play it. Then we kind of get further away from that, we start writing actual chords out. But who have I talked with the number system about in here before? Have we ever talked about it, you and I? We might not have. This might be the first. I hope it is. Now, the number system, what is it? It's, just, it's a system to assign each chord a number. Pretty self-explanatory, right? I'm going to show you guys a quick formula. Even back to Miss Good's days, who remembers do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, right? So what is that? What is that? It's like a vocal warm-up. It's an exercise. It's a, it's a lot of things, right? But the actual formula behind it is the major scale, right? So when you guys, I'm going to show you two different things here quickly. The word tone means two, okay? The word semitone, you can imagine, means one. Make sense? The video we watched, exactly. And that was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So if we talk about, these are our intervals, right? So tone equals two spaces, and we're talking about it like this because we have so many different instruments at one time. Because that can mean two different frets on the guitar. It can mean two keys on the actual piano. But if we establish that tone equals two, semitone equals one, then we're going to use this formula right here. Tone, tone, semi. Tone, 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 semi. And you're going to be surprised at how easy this makes sense, I promise you. So this is our major scale, right? This is, this is going to make a lot more sense over next year but a really, really good second to it. This is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, right? This is our major scale, the formula we're going to use. This song is in the key of C. So we're going to, like, what three chords are we playing for this song? Anybody? You know, I know you, we just talked about it earlier. What's your first chord you play? No, that's your third chord. What's the first one you play? The minor. A. Yeah, A minor, right? A minor, then we go to the first fret on the E string. And Coy, what's the first fret on the E string? F. So we have A minor, and then F, and then the chord that you just said, Sarah K, which is C, right? So we, we basically want to figure out the numbers for those three chords, right? Now, do we change for that entire piece of music, right? Everybody's playing a different part, but the actual chords stay the same, right? So we're going to be looking at this in the key of C. So we're going to be looking for the key of C. I'm going to write it out just like this. We're looking for seven different numbers, OK? Whatever key we are in, 
In this case, we're in the key of what? Whatever key we are in is always going to be our one, okay? Now, this is where we're just going to look at this, and we're going to look at this up top. Koi, if we're starting at C, and I move one tone or two spaces away from C, that puts me where? So the two in the key of C is, okay? So I've moved one tone, correct? So Gigi, I have to move what next? Another tone. I'm sitting at D, correct? Yeah. So I move two more spaces, puts me where? E. e. So the three, E. And anybody can answer this. So I'm sitting at E, right? I've just moved a tone. Now I've got to move a semitone. What's a semitone? One. One. So if I'm at E, it puts me at F, F right? Then I've got to move a tone away from there. Where does that put me? Very good. Got to move a tone away from there. Where does that put me? A. A. Gonna move a tone away from there. Where does that put me? B. B. Very good. It's a little tricky there. And then the last semitone brings you back around full circle to C, which is the one. You'll see how we did that. It is a lot easier than what people think. I promise you. So if you kind of plug that formula into what you guys already have engraved into your brain, you can spit out the seven chords that go in a particular key. Right. Last thing to remember you need to assign your majors and minors, right? If I write an A like this, what does that imply? Major. If I write an A with a little tiny M, it means? Minor. minor. So chords one, four, and five are always major, and that will never change. Chords two, three, and six, you could imagine, are always minor. That makes sense? Seven is diminished. We'll worry about that next year, okay? But one, four, and five, do I need to do anything to those? But I do need to do something to 2, 3, and 6. What do I need to do? Put a little into it, which means what? So D is really D minor, E is really E minor, and A is really A minor, right? And which three chords did we use for this song? A minor, F. So now, can somebody tell me what that is in numbers? 6, 4. One. Does everybody see how we just did that? Pretty easy, right? I mean, it's not easy in the sense that there's a lot on the board right now. There's a lot of key points to memorize and remember, but for the most part, it's self-explanatory. Can you do any combination of numbers? Yes. And if you remember in that video, that's where, as a songwriter, you start to develop or you start to kind of uh, pick up on patterns or feelings or kind of like moods that certain number combinations will convey.